Welcome back you guys and we're almost two weeks through the NBA season. A lot has happened and some of that has been statistics that I wasn't expecting to read before the season started. Now most of these stats in the video will change over time but it's still fun to talk about weird early season trends and document it in a video. I want to let you guys know that today's content is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website made, go to squarespace.com slash Cali to get 10% off your first purchase. Now the first stat on here that is the weirdest is DeAndre Jordan's free throw percentage through the first 6 games. DeAndre is a career 44% free throw shooter. 44%. In his last season in LA, he shot 58% on 4 attempts per game. In his first 6 games in Dallas, DeAndre is shooting 86% from the free throw line. 86%. That's just ridiculous. To go from 58 to 86 in just one season, even though it's only 6 games, is pretty impressive. Now the obvious question is, can he sustain this? Can he sustain this level of free throw shooting? I honestly can't answer that because we have never seen this type of free throw shooting from him in his career. He just had a game against Toronto where he made 8 out of 9 so he's making it on a decent amount of volume. This is definitely something to monitor the rest of the season. I'll say that DeAndre stays in the 70s range by April. I knew JaVale would be relied on a lot more than he ever had in his career on this Lakers team. He's going to be important as a role man, finisher, rebounder, and defender, but I was not anticipating him averaging more points than Carl Towns about three days ago. He's not averaging more than Cat anymore after that 9 point game against the Spurs. Right now, JaVale is LA's third leading scorer at 16 points per game. He is a career 7 point per game scorer, and to be honest, if I had to guess before the season started, I would say the top 3 Lakers scorers through 6 games would be LeBron, Ingram, and Kuzma. And I would guess that he'd be around 10 points per game, but no, he's at 16 and number 3 on the Lakers behind Kuzma and LeBron. The Lakers have been relying on him, and they're even letting him go to work on offense in certain situations. As long as he stays healthy, I don't see why he can't stay in the 13 to 15 point per game range. The Lakers don't really have another answer at center besides Jonathan Williams. He's going to be running a lot of pick and rolls with the Lakers ball handlers. I'll probably do another video going in detail talking about JaVale, but yeah, seeing him average 16 a game is weird considering he's never averaged 10 points once. Before the Warriors game against the Brooklyn Nets last night, John Henson of the Milwaukee Bucks had 5 made threes, which was one more than Klay Thompson has made. Well today he is tied with Henson. Klay Thompson has only made 5 3 point shots through 7 games. He is shooting 13% at the 3 point line so far. To give you some perspective, it took Klay 1 game to get to 4 3 pointers made last year. Just 1 game. Cameron Payne of the Chicago Bulls right now has 9 made 3 so far, and he might be one of the worst starters in the league. But this year he's at 5 3 pointers made at game number 7, which is wild for many reasons. For one, Clay does not need much room to get off his shot. If he's open or tightly contested, you feel pretty comfortable either way, so him struggling like this is weird when he's missing shots in both scenarios. The other thing is, you'd think the Warriors would be struggling a tiny bit on offense, but that hasn't been the case. The Warriors are third in offensive rating, and have only lost one game, which was at the buzzer. Now is this going to last? Absolutely not. Clay has shot over 40% from the 3 point line in every season of his career, and he's going to have a week of games where he gets hot like how KD and Curry are currently. I definitely wouldn't worry about it, but it's weird to see guys like John Henson and Cameron Payne have the same amount of threes made or more through the first few games of the season. Next we have the San Antonio Spurs, and every single year since 2012, the Spurs have been top 10 in defensive rating. When I think of the Spurs, one of the things I think of is really good team defense. They always seem to put together good defensive units throughout the whole 48 minutes of a game and make it tough for teams to put up numbers. Even when guys like Kawhi and Tim Duncan have missed games in the past, they still put out very respectable defensive teams. But this year is a lot different and it's weird seeing a Spurs team that isn't really good on defense. They have been really bad. The Spurs right now, according to Basketball Reference and ESPN Stats, they are 29th in defensive rating. Let's just say I had to guess in July 2018 and you asked me where the Spurs would be in defensive rating through the first 6 or 7 games, I'd probably say top 15 given their reputation and it being early in the year. Telling me that they're almost dead last in defense, I'd be really shocked to hear that because of their prior history. Now it's not exactly weird that they're having trouble defending with their personnel, they have no DeJounte Murray, Kawhi Leonard, or Derek White. 
They just don't have that many guys who can get you stops on the perimeter. Other than LaMarcus Aldridge, there's no one else on the team that I'd really consider to be a borderline All-NBA defender. When you're running out lineups with Bryn Forbes, DeMar DeRozan, and Marco Bellinelli, you're not going to create much resistance on defense. This is the one stat of the video that I don't expect to change much. I don't think they'll be the worst, but I'd make a bet that they are in the bottom 10, bottom 12 defenses by the end of the season. It's going to be tough for this team to get stops with their current personnel. For the last part of the video, why not talk about a team that's playing really good defense early on, and that is the Denver Nuggets. When you talk to people about the Nuggets, a big criticism you hear is they don't have capable defenders and cannot get stops. But through five games of the season, the Nuggets have the third best defensive rating according to basketball reference. Even Gary Harris is a little shocked by their defensive play. He said in an interview that it's a little different, but you know, defense is something that has been lacking for us in the past, so that's good. We're not really worried about our offense right now. We know that's going to come around. Let's just say I watched zero NBA games this year and you asked me to guess where the Nuggets were ranked defensively. Even if you told me that Paul Millsap was healthy, I would have guessed somewhere in the bottom 10 because we're talking about the Denver Nuggets. Since the 2014 season, the Nuggets have been in the bottom 10 in defensive rating every year. With all of their average defenders on the team, it is impressive that their team defense is clicking like this. Do I expect this defensive rain to last into April? Not really. I could be wrong, but I think they'll cool off a bit. I do think they can stay in that 15 to 17 range in defensive rating. If Paul Millsap can stay healthy and Jokic can continue to execute the new defensive scheme, then they could be okay. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you don't know what Squarespace is, it's a place where you go to create your own website, domain, or online store. What I like about Squarespace is the quality and accessibility. If you're like me and you know nothing about typing code or have no design skills, Squarespace will do all the work for you. They have really nice templates to choose from that makes your site look professional. It's important to say that if you support Squarespace, you're also supporting my content. So if you, a friend or a family member, wants to make something cool, go to squarespace.com slash kanelovescali for a free trial. And if you like the free trial and want to keep going with your site, use the offer code Kane for 10% off your first purchase. I hope today's video was interesting to listen to, appreciate you for making it to the end. I'll be making more videos about early season trends this week, so be on the lookout for that.